We've unboxed our Stingray sprayer, and now what? How do you set it up? How do you test it to see, like, what the heck you're supposed to do with this thing? Well, again, from a beginner's perspective, I've not plugged it in, I've not sprayed anything, I'm gonna show it as I learn, as I go with you guys. So this the very next video, after we did the unboxing, is gonna be just that. We're gonna set it up, and we're gonna test it out with some water on cardboard, showing you just a couple of the techniques that I've learned via, you know, watching videos and reading and doing things myself. Again, through my beginner's perspective of how it goes. So if this is something you're interested in, stay tuned today on Wise All Paint Party. All right, so just initially when I open the box, if you watch the unboxing, if you have not, I'll link it here in the video so you can go check it out as I open it up to see all the things. So I'm not gonna go through all that again, but one of the things is the instructions. It kind of goes through how the system works, you know, all the different little nuances of it. The main thing is, is there's three parts, three main parts, right? So you got your turbine unit, your air hose, and your spray gun. So our spray gun for this is going to be our metal. We have a all plastic one as well. So, but again, this is the only one I have. So this is going to be what I use for all the videos that are to come. And then uh, what do you do? So like I got it and I'm like, okay, well, this is cool. Well, how do I set this thing up? So I'm looking through the bags and I got some little clip things. I got this hose, I got the plug. Okay. So then I thought, well, let me just show you guys because you might be the same way. You get it in the box, you pull it out, you look at it, it's beautiful. You're like, yeah, it's gonna be amazing. But then you get that intimidation factor of like, okay, I gotta set it up, I gotta clean it, I gotta know, but I'm there with you. So I wanted to do it with you guys. So I've not plugged anything in, I'm not connected anything. So we're just gonna do that right here, right now. So this is what we have, this is how we set it up. So. First and foremost, it comes with a plug that is detachable, which is really great, as I mentioned in the unboxing, because if you're wanting to, this is a very mobile unit, so if I want to pick it up and carry it around or move it somewhere else or just trans, transport it, like I want to take it to another shop space, right? I want to be able to unplug the, ho <clears throat> unplug the hose, unplug the plug, and be able to carry the unit by itself because you have this cord dangling, and imagine this thing get ripped and torn or something at the connection point, and then, then what do you do? You're gonna have to set it in to get repair or whatever. Now, you can just unplug the power and have just the unit, just this one piece to carry around and transport and not have to worry about, you know, anything getting damaged. So, first and foremost, there's a little plug in the back. You'll see back here. And you're just gonna plug it in just like you would any computer or any other kind of, you know, uh, hardware that you have. Okay, so that's that. So in the bag, um, or in the box, there's a bag with these two little clips. <clears throat> and how these are gonna work is, the way I understand it, is one end is gonna go to the other end of the hose. Again, beginner's perspective, I've not done this yet. I just know what I've seen and read, right? So. We're gonna screw this part on like this, I believe. Yep, that's it. So it's good and tight, like that. And then this is the part that clips. So we can take this little part and slide it down and then clip it into our gun. So we pull the clip down, slide it down in, let the clip go back up, and then it locks into place, which is kind of cool. So imagine you're running around spraying and this thing is not gonna come come off on you. So you just put that in into the spray gun. And then this is gonna be how easy it is to set this thing up. Only thing that's gonna be left is take the other end of your hose and we're gonna screw it into the actual turbine unit itself. And it has just, uh, you know, just a regular screw, like a hose kind of thing. It's got a rubber insert to make it good tight, eight airtight seal and we're just gonna screw this on until it tightens up. And you can see how long the hose is. Again, it was something I really loved about <clears throat> this particular unit 
because you know, like if I got a big old dresser or whatever, I can walk all the way around it and be able to not have to worry about, you know, anything getting in the way. Now I'm just playing with it now and realizing that this thing swivels. So again, it's the first time I've ever put it on here. I wanted to do it with you guys. So that swivels, so that's pretty cool. So if like if I'm moving around, I know it's not gonna get like knotted up and tangled up, you know, like a hose would if the, if the hose down is rigid and you're moving that thing around before you know it, everything's all tangled up. So, so that's pretty cool. So that's pretty much it. That's the entire setup. You plug in the cord, you plug it into your outlet, you connect your hose, which will probably end up staying connected all the time anyway. And then you have your spray gun. Now, the can I left on from when we did the video. So this thing came separate. So you take your can and it's got the two little ledge thingies. And you stick the two down in and you just simply stick it on, twist it till each one of the little pegs sit in their spot. And then you have this little lever right here that you push as far as it'll go. It's not gonna go all the way, but as far as you can get it, force it over there without too much force. And then it's locked into place. And that bad boy is not going anywhere. It's, I guess it's gonna pressurize once it starts spraying. So you definitely wanna ensure that it's on there good and tight. And then you go from there. Now your gun, the way I understand it is pretty simple. It's got one knob. This knob in the back, we're gonna start with it all the way, turned all the way in, and from that, I can't push the gun. It doesn't do anything, it just sits there. Now, as I release that screw out, depending on how many turns, like quarter turn or half turn, which I'm still learning about, the, the trigger will start to depress a little bit. So I go another half turn, depresses a little more. Another half turn, depresses a little more and so on and so forth until it's like a good shot. Now, how much you turn the knob, the way I understand it, will be dependent upon what you're spraying. So for Wise Owl, when you're using our products, we're gonna, I'm gonna have it down pat where I can kind of explain to you once I learn more about it, how many turns, how, exactly how many turns for OHE, for varnish, for chalk synthesis paint, all those things. But for now, the main thing is just so you know that this gun can shoot all of our products, including our glazes, but you'll have to have the adjustment be different for each, depending on whether you watered it down some, which you can for like chalk synthesis paint, you can water it down 10%, I believe. So depending on that will depend on how close you're dialing it in or dialing it down. And then from there, it's really simple. The front end has this, let's see, I'm not sure what the heck you call this thing, the little cap thing, right? And it screws on and holds the sprayer part in place. So you can turn that to whatever direction you need to turn it to. So the way I understand it is if the little things are on the sides, the pattern is spraying up and down. If you're doing it diagonally, it's gonna spray a tight, small circular pattern. And then if the dot, these things are up and down, it's spraying flat and horizontal. And that's how that works. It's in the instruction manual. I'm gonna play with it. I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna test it for you guys with some water on cardboard so you can kind of see, but <clears throat> that's kind of the, the long and the short of it. And that's all there's to it. I mean, for this particular gun, it does only have the one dial, so it is a little bit easier to use. I know there are some that I've seen, especially the ones I've seen that were HBLP, have two different dials where you dial one is the product and the other is the air. For this, it's just the one dial. So it makes it quite a bit easier to just use and basically to be able to have the settings exact every time. So what I'm thinking is, you know, if I tighten this all the way up, right, and then I put a little dot or something like that right there, I'll know, okay, when I'm doing a, a quarter turn or half turn, how many of those do I need to do to get to OHE? Or how many of those I need to do to get to chalk synthesis paint, right? And then I just do that. And then I know every time, in theory, it should spray on the same. But the way I've seen is everybody always tests first on some cardboard or some paper or some scrap something before you get to the piece. 
which makes total sense. So I would expect that. As I always do when I'm doing finishes, I always test it on a sample first. So that's kind of that same idea that you're doing with spraying. But today, I'm actually gonna put water in this guy and spray, I'm really excited because I've never done this before. I'm gonna spray on some cardboard. I'm just gonna monkey with the dial and show you what I've learned. So <laughs> the way I understand it mainly is when you're spraying, you want enough product, as we'll call it, to land on your surface and stay to cover, but not too much where it drips and runs on a vertical surface or too little that you're not getting coverage. So that it's a happy medium you have to dial it in. So we're getting enough product to cover, but not too much that we're getting drips and runs. And then there's techniques about how you hold it and all that kind of stuff, but we'll get, we'll get to that. Um, again, from a beginner's perspective, never done this before, walking through kind of just the setup for now and then spraying some water here in a little bit. All right, so this thing is a little bit loud. So what I'm thinking I'm probably gonna do is do a voiceover of what I'm gonna be doing. But at the end of the day, uh, the long and the short of what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna take in the sprayer, my first time ever on camera with you guys, and I'm gonna be spraying across this cardboard with this is just water right now. I'm going to be doing, let's see, so it's side to side, that means it's going up and down this way. So a uh, vertical pattern. So I'm gonna do a vertical pattern across and a vertical pattern back and then see what that looks like. So I'm gonna start off with, okay, like right now, there's no, I can't push or pull the trigger at all because this is down all the way back. So I'm gonna start with it and probably just do half turns. So I'll start and then do half turn and then do another pass and then just kind of walk through how that alters what the water does. So initially it should be a very, very fine mist. And then as it goes, it'll, it'll get thicker. The product will get thicker and then it'll start dripping all over the place, which is what we don't want. So initially <clears throat> I have already turned it on just to make, to see how loud it was. And initially what it's doing is it's shooting out a lot of air. So you'll see this start to move around a little bit before I even spray anything. So the air is already coming out. So you know that. So you turn it on, it's a little loud. It's already got air coming out of it. It's already blowing, right? But there's no product until you pull the trigger. And then only if you pull the trigger, if this is dialed out a little bit. Once it's dialed all the way in, the trigger will not press and nothing is happening. So I'm gonna go turn on the turbine. <coughs> I'm going to dial this. Let's say we'll do a half, let's see. <coughs> a half turn and I'm going to spray a vertical pattern over and back and then do another half turn over and back and just kind of give you an idea of what happens. I'm excited. This is going to be fun. And then we'll talk about it after I'm done, uh, after the turbines turn, turned off, talk through more of what I did, but I'll also do a voiceover so you can kind of understand what I'm doing at that moment as well. But it's just a little loud. So I figured that that's going to be the best way to do it. So give me a second and I'll be right back and we'll do some spraying. All right, got no air or no product coming out because I've got it dialed all the way in. So I'm going to take and I'm going to do, let's do a half turn and see what happens. All right, and as you can see, we got a little bit of drip. So I'm gonna dial it back a, a quarter turn. So we're gonna go pull back on the product from what I did initially. All right, and that works much, much better. So I got the product on across here but with no drip. So you can see if you put, dial it up too much, you get drip. If you dial it in just right, you're getting just the amount. And as the air is blowing, it's drying it off. We're gonna do another pass. All right. 
pretty cool. All right, jumping right back over here. I wanted to turn that off so I could talk through what just happened. Now that's really, really cool. So um, our in-house expert, Holly Col Colvig, is the one who kind of showed this kind of testing it on cardboard thing in our retailer group. And it was something I thought was amazing because it really allowed for a newbie like me and maybe you to see, okay, how this, how this functions, right? So the function is it blows air. And then once you have it dialed to the setting you want, it blows the product, right? So I had it dialed all the way back. Trigger wouldn't pull, no product, just air. I went a half turn and I did that on purpose. I knew it was gonna be too much. I went a half turn and sprayed and you can see there's still drips on here from that. So imagine that was your paint, right? You, you had it dialed too far, too much product and <clears throat> that's what you got. Now, I dialed it to a quarter turn which was dialing it back a quarter turn from what I started from and it sprayed on beautifully. I mean, it was no drips, no runs. Matter of fact, it already dried and it was complete coverage. And I knew a, a quarter turn was it because she had already done it in her video, but I wanted to show you too much will get you drips. Not enough will make it pretty dry, but not enough with water is kind of hard to show on camera and just the right amount will cover. And then I don't know if how you, how well you saw it, but I was overlapping the pattern by about half. And I think that's the normal, again, beginner, still learning, but that's kind of how I did. So I went across keeping my hand, you know, six to nine inches away and not doing this number. From what I understand that's the bad juju. And if you think about it, like if you come to the end and you pull away, you're farther away here than you are here. So you're putting less product right here than you would right here. So you wanna keep a nice even all the way across. You start off of your pro project. So you probably saw it blowing right here first because I start off. That way there's not a feathering effect. It's already on and going. And then you go all the way across, cut, uh, go off the edge, do your 50% overlap and then come all the way back. And once you have it dialed in just right as I had on there, it, covered it perfectly. It was really, really cool. So now I'm excited to paint something, but I really just wanted to show you this initial, just look at how this thing works. I'm probably gonna do the dial and show you the couple other little patterns too before I'm done. But this is really awesome. I'm excited. Can't wait to do some more painting with it or actually do some painting with it and share a little bit about that. So I'm gonna turn the turbine back on, make a little noise. I'm gonna dial it, I'll show you how I dialed it, show you what it looks like, how to do it really quick, and that'll be it for today. So, but I just wanted to do a quick setup and testing so I can get playing, because I wanted to videotape it for you guys, with you guys, before I actually started painting. So I'm gonna turn the turbine back on, give you a couple other little shows, exit out, and then we'll be done for today. All right, for this, I decided to go ahead and do a voiceover to make it a little bit easier for you guys to hear. So as you can see, I'm doing a horizontal pattern. And with a horizontal pattern, you're gonna go up and down. So you can see me, it's already dialed in to that quarter turn. I already know I got the product right. So now I just dialed it horizontally and I'm going up and down. And again, starting off of my piece, which is the cardboard here, and ending off of my cardboard. So you don't have any feathering at the ends. You want it to have that solid spray pattern all the way through. And that looks amazing. I was so excited. I can't even tell you. And then you dial it over so it's, you know, diagonally and it's going to hit just a spot. And as you can see right off the bat, I splattered and was too close. And then as I got further away from the cardboard, it didn't splatter. All right. So you can see how I did that horizontal pattern and went up and down. That was perfect. And then when I dialed it over to the spot, you can see where I the air hit the how much product I was putting on and we had drips. And I'm going to assume because again, beginner, because we dialed it into a more tight stream, more product <laughs> came out than what it was over here. Hence, you'd need to dial it back to an eighth of a turn probably to get this dialed in just right with water, of course. Of course, depending on the product will depend on how 
once you dial it. But that's another reason why you want to test it on a sample before you do your main of whatever it is you're doing. And then also because there was so much coming out and I was a little close, the air splattered the water all over the place. That's another thing. Being far enough away, but not too far away, but definitely not too close because that air that's constantly coming out of that thing, because the air doesn't stop until the turbine comes off. The air is always going to be pushing the product. So if you have too much, that's what's going to happen. You can see these little like things over here. And then over here, I pulled a little bit further away, not as much dripping, even though I had the dial set the same way. So you can see that was the diagonal or uh, yeah, diagonal setting, right? Like this. And that gave me the spot. So if there's like a certain, like a corner, I guess, or a certain area you're trying to specifically target and not a wide pattern, that's when you're gonna use the diagonal one. And then of course the vertical one and horizontal one kind of gave you those examples of, but this is gonna be fun. Um, hoping you guys are enjoying these, you know, beginner videos to kind of maybe pull you away from being intimidated as I definitely was. Um, had this thing sitting for about a week trying to just talk myself into figuring out, okay, how do I wanna share it, one, and two, how do I actually use it? And I think just doing this method with some cardboard and some water and just getting comfortable with, okay, you push this button, you pull this trigger, and this is what happens. If I dial it, this is what makes this thing do more or less. If I go closer or further away, it makes it do this or that. And then the way I understand it is water is really difficult to do this, to get it right, because it's so thin. So imagine if you had paint that's a little thicker, how much easier it will be to get the right amount that covers, but not too much that drips. So that's what we're gonna work on. And then I'm gonna work on that and have like how much specifically to dial. So we know a fourth of a turn was perfect for water. So what will it be for OHE? How many turns, right? I'll try to get that information out for specifically for this, this sprayer, obviously, but it'll have that same kind of thought process for whatever it is you're using with our products. All right, before I close, I just wanted to show you one last little thing. So I turned us off the turbine, right? And there's still pressure in here, which is meaning there's still gonna be paint or product or whatever in and throughout your system. So what I did, and this is how I watched how to do this, was I dialed the screw out to allow more product to come out. And then I offloaded, pulling the trigger. And you can see how it's coming. And see some of the water came out of there, right? So I didn't get it all before. And get all your product out and then turn everything off and then clean it, right? So we've done that. So now I'm gonna take my, oh, my water off like so, right? And then we're good to go. We can clean it. We can do whatever we're gonna do with it after the fact. But just think about if you had product still all up in there, you're definitely gonna wanna get it all out into a container or if you're you're okay with just losing that little bit of product just spray it into like trash or whatever however you dispose of your product but i just wanted to show that just so you know like maybe have the container of paint handy you know spray it back into the cup how are we going to do it at, <laughs> at the very end but that was the final little step this was fun i'm glad i got to share it with you guys is first time ever, legit first time ever. I did not play with it beforehand. What you saw me spray on the camera, on the videos you're gonna see is exactly my first time ever. And I thought that's just the way to do it. That's why I waited to do the video. I thought doing a you know, beginner's perspective with you guys will help alleviate the worries that even I had about doing it, about testing, about trying, spraying. It's always been just me in a brush and it's been a little intimidating get a sprayer and try it and worried about the cleaning and the spraying and am I gonna mess it up? Is it gonna look all blotchy and gross or is it gonna, you know, all the things. I mean, there's a lot of different reasons why, I guess I never tried spraying. Maybe you're the same boat. Um, hopefully these videos are gonna help. So we have the unboxing video to show you what you get with our Apollo Stingray sprayer. And then I have the metal version of our Wiseall Apollo Stingray sprayer. And that's what I'm gonna be using for all the testing and playing. You might not have that sprayer, but 
No, you can use all of our products in whatever sprayer you do have. And I'm hoping these videos helps you just make that decision to go ahead and try it maybe. So that's gonna be it for today. If you wanna try or check out the sprayer, you can find it on YSLPaint.com. And if you want to try any of our products, be sure to find your local YSL retailer nearest to you. I'll have a link down below to help you find the one closest to you. Hope everybody has a blessed day. And as always, happy painting.